This morning, police are searching for a suspect after a man was found shot multiple times in La Jolla. Thanks so much for joining us here at 6 a.m. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Irampur. This happened in the 3100 block of Morning Way across the street from a really busy shopping center. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live now this morning. That's a pretty quiet mm -hmm. condo complex. Chris, I'm pretty familiar with it. Uh, what do we know about the shooting so far? Yeah, well, this was reported sometime just a little bit after 9.45 p.m. In fact, we were just speaking with a gentleman here off camera before we started this live report, and he was telling us pretty much everybody was about to be laying down when they heard multiple shots. So again, as we heard from police, they said that this victim was shot multiple times. Well, the gentleman that we just spoke with just said heard at least five, six shots maybe. Now, of course, we understand that when you're in a condo uh, co complex like this or even like a can canyon atmosphere, echoes tend to happen. So again, that's not an exact count, but that's how many were heard. So again, that sort of backs up that report there of multiple shots being fired. Now, as for the victim, we're told that it's a man uh, in his mid 40s, again, some, somewhere around 47 uh, years old, was outside at the time during the shooting. So this is not something that took place inside of their residence, was outside getting out of their car when another car pulled up and that's when shots were fired. Now, as for the shooter and even that vehicle, no descriptions were made available by the San Diego Police Department. We know that they are investigating, but that victim was shot multiple times again in their stomach. Their injuries are considered life threatening. So uh, when we're trying to piece this together with this limited information, what we should point out is that police aren't here on scene. And they also did not say that the public uh, should remain inside or or gave any kind of indication that there still may be an element of danger. So while we don't know yet the relationship between the shooter and the victim, we're still trying to kind of piece together with what context clues that we have. We're waiting for another update from the San Diego Police Department, but we have not been told uh, that those in this area should feel that they are in any immediate danger or even beyond the condo complex. So again, we're waiting to find out a little bit more uh, about this shooting, even even the victim's status. Again, they were uh, suffering from what are believed to be life threatening injuries. So as soon as we do hear more information, we'll be sure to pass that along both here and on CBS 8.com. Eric and Netta. This morning, one person is dead. Three others are hurt after a mass shooting at a mall food court in El Paso, Texas. <laughs> We brought in a handful of customers into the soccer room and, you know, we closed the gate. We were there for like a good hour. It's just pure terrifying. Two people are in custody. No word on a motive. The mall is right next to the Walmart where a mass shooting in 2019 left 23 people dead and nearly two dozen others hurt. Then this morning we expect to learn more about the mass shooting at Michigan State University that killed three students. Police will be providing an update. We're also now hearing from a cafeteria employee who came face to face with the shooter. I honestly do think he shot at me and missed. I don't know like why, you know what I mean? Because none of us deserve that. How terrifying for him. Today, students and staff will be allowed to collect their belongings from the academic building where the gunman struck first. A warning this morning now for beachgoers. Some South Bay beaches remain closed this morning. So you see right here, this is the live updates that we get from San Diego County. You see all those red dots right there along our local beaches, mainly in Imperial Beach. Those are ones to avoid. That's because a major pipeline ruptured in Tijuana, causing millions of gallons of raw sewage to pour through San Diego border canyons. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol joining us live in Imperial Beach. And this is something people down there, sadly, are, are, are used to, Dana Marie. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Ned. I mean, the community here in Imperial Beach, you see those yellow signs right behind me. They're used to that because of how much sewage and bacteria from Tijuana flows into this area. Now, in terms of this most recent damage, this comes after a developer damaged a 60 inch pipeline uh, south of Tijuana on February 10th. That had to stop the pumping stations at the wastewater system, which really contributed to the flow of that sewage in our area. Now, the mayor of Imperial Beach is fed up with the closed beaches and dirty water. Paloma Aguirre has made stopping the flow of sewage one of her top priorities. She was just elected, so all eyes are on her to see what comes next. Now, she says help is on the way. $300 million in federal funding has now been allocated to help solve the issue. The money will go to rerouting wastewater, fix sewage pipes, and also replace the sewage treatment plant in Tijuana. She 
She says we need to make sure that the funding is spent well and that the timeline and work plans are on schedule. Most importantly, that we're working with our partners across the border in Mexico. She does believe her Mexican background will help facilitate these conversations. She says that we share a coastline and recognizes how important fostering that good relationship is. Aguirre has a master's in marine biodiversity and conservation from UC San Diego Scripps Institute of Oceanography. So she really hopes to use her background to make a difference. This is truly a passion for her, making sure that the South Bay beaches are cleaned up. The water is safe for the community here uh, to swim in. But in terms of that pipeline, we're learning that by next week, they should have fixed that flow of water into San Diego. So hopefully the beaches will soon open here. Keep an eye online. They also give you those live updates in terms of how much bacteria level and if it's safe to go in or not. I'm Dana Marie McNichol coming to you live from Chula Vista. Thank you, Dana Marie. And now this morning, take a look at your screens here. Sheriff's Department asking for your help right now to find this missing Poway man with dementia. Here are photos of him. He's 63 years old. Ji Lu is his name. Last seen on Relton Drive near La Jolla Boulevard in Bird Rock on Tuesday afternoon. He's from Poway. He was last wearing a green baseball cap, a dark gray winter jacket, black sweatpants, and black shoes. Please call 911 if you see him. And now this morning, Encinitas is in fact moving forward with one of the strictest smoking bans across San Diego County. So you will not be able to smoke tobacco, electronic cigarettes or marijuana in most public spaces. That includes sidewalks and inside your parked car. People both for and against the move spoke out last night. This ordinance will further protect people from dangerous secondhand smoke exposure. It will make sidewalks, streets, parking lots, and other public areas look much cleaner and more inviting. We should inspire people, not restrict them with more laws that are likely unconstitutional. This was something we previewed throughout our morning show yesterday, and now the policy will go into effect 90 days after the next city council meeting. The sheriff's department will be in charge of enforcing the new policy, and violators could face fines of up to $150. Those potholes, let's update you on what's happening with them. Of course, they popped up as the storms have rolled through San Diego over the past few weeks. We've heard from many of you with concerns and car damage that you've experienced. Well, this morning, the city says it's making progress in repairing our potholes, and they've reduced the backlog now by 80%. We're told crews have repaired more than 14,000 since the first of the year. As of now, there's about 350 open reports on the Get It Done app. If your car has been damaged, listen here, you can file a claim and the city might reimburse the cost of those repairs because we know that gets pricey to change the tires and the rims and all the other things that this has caused. But I will say, Evan, uh, driving on my way into work, there were a few patched up ones that, yeah, are, uh -huh. that were problems in the past. The other day here yeah. in Kearney Mesa, I was uh, driving home yeah. and I saw on the side they were uh, doing some of that work there. So, so hey, 14000 that's a big improvement. Yes, thank you to all the crews that are out there who are doing the work out there on the roads. Uh, it's a cold start to the morning. We know that uh, it can also lead to those potholes when we fluctuate between sub freezing and uh, then go above freezing by the afternoon. We're sub freezing out there for Ramona, 26 degrees right now, 31 in Escondido, 32 in Poway, 32 in Julian. So it's a very cold start to the morning. Frost advisory is in effect all the way through 8 a.m. Coastline is mostly in the low 40s to kick off the day. Compare these temperatures to just 24 hours ago and we're mostly colder when you look inland, especially right around El Cajon, Alpine, Ramona. Alpine is six degrees colder right now than where they were at this time 24 hours ago. And keep in mind, some of these uh, temperatures already yesterday morning were 20 degrees colder than the day prior. So we are just continuing on this cooling trend as skies are clear to kick off the day. By the afternoon, though, we'll be pretty comfortable. We'll set the stage for mid and low 60s in the forecast, 63 along the coast, 64 inland. Afternoon highs coming just around noon, 1 p.m. or so. Breezy over the mountaintops. These are going to be easterly winds, so offshore winds that are building and helping to warm us up by the afternoon. 
That frost advisory goes for your coast and inland valleys through 8 a.m. Best idea with this is to keep in mind that if you have any sensitive vegetation, you don't want it to be damaged. Cover it up if possible. Also keep in mind with areas that saw rain less than 48 hours ago, they could be slick on the road. So if you're out there driving, keep in mind there could be some areas where uh, slick conditions are, uh, are out there. Hard freeze warning off to the east of us. Freeze warning to the east of us. So the greater southwestern U.S. is feeling this out there. Clouds building from the west. No traffic this morning. You can see how we are on a pretty smooth start to the morning commute. You can head to cbsa.com slash traffic if you want the latest. I'll send things back to over to you.